So I got, like, the cutest fucking story from my grandma. Like, holy shit. I called my grandma today because it was my grandpa's birthday. And, um, my grandpa, it was, yeah, it was my grandpa's birthday. And I was talking to grandma. And grandma's like, what happened to that really cute guy you were talking to? And I'm like, what, Sean? And she's like, yeah. And I'm like, I don't know. He, like, fucked off, like, a month ago. Like, he just stopped talking to me, like, he just stopped talking to me. He just, like, fucking up, straight up ghosted me. And she's like, well, maybe it's because his wife found out he was cheating. <laughs> I, I, was, <laughs> I was like, Grandma, what the hell? Sean the Anaconda has a wife? I don't know. I don't no. know if there's a woman in uh, existence no, no, no. in all of Florida that can tame that snake. Shut up. Beat that. <laughs> No, no, I was, I was laughing because, of course, he doesn't have a wife, but that's just what Grandma said. And I'm like, God, Grandma's 80 years old, and you still got it. And, uh, <laughs> so she's like, well, maybe, like, maybe if, uh, Sean took his phone to one of those, like, texter mechanics, and they, like, did mechanical stuff on his texting, then it, maybe he would have found all those, uh, texts between, uh, or maybe his wife would have found out all those texts. And I'm like... A text mechan um, mechanic, like a text mechanic. That sounds that sounds about right. I'm like, oh my god, my grandma is the cutest goddamn person in the world. Because right. right. I am, I am <clears throat> kicked. I am beard up. I am sexually repressed, and I am ready to make innuendos. Let's do I'm, this. And we're right. talking about self reproduction. I am totally about that, sir. I have a degree. <laughs> I have a degree. Hard on There is a small forest in Indonesia that I have deforested with my tissue habits. All right. Now, welcome back to Animal Bites, where we tell you what Animal Planet, Discovery Channel, Disney Channel, and that guy at the zoo wearing those way too short shorts won't tell you. I'm Bud. Over there we got River and DA. And today we're going to be talking about parthenogenesis, also known as asexual reproduction, also known as virgin births, whatever the hell you want to call it, whatever you want to put in your Bible. <laughs> That's what we're going to be talking about today. Also known so, as nature's way of saying, go fuck yourself. But only yourself. But only yourself. Because fuck only fuck you know only what you like. Only I'm definitely down with this topic. I love this topic. This is I have I have much much background in this. I think I'm going to be a wealth of information and knowledge for our our viewers. A one man trip to Planned Parenthood. <laughs> <laughs> mm. Oh yeah, <laughs> that joke got dark. <laughs> All right, so, uh, what exactly, sorry, what, e yeah. sorry guys, I have a virus on my computer, so it keeps doing pop-ups every once in a while, so. I thought that was going somewhere else, I thought you were going to say you had, uh, the Backstreet Boys reunion tour of 2020. I love the Backstreet Boys reunion tour of 2020. <laughs> I can't wait I'm for it to be to over. <laughs> I'm trying not to date ourselves here. Alrighty, so, whoops, where'd it go? Where did our Back to go? the topic at hand. Alright, um. So. It wasn't, Parthenogen it wasn't from where you think, Steph. <laughs> Parthenogenesis is asexual reproduction, and the method that is usually, in theory, taking place is when different cells are dividing inside of the parent animal and what happens is sometimes those cells will accidentally form an egg cell as well as some polar cells and said polar cells which are usually just tossed to the wayside and discarded in the process of cell duplication accidentally impregnate the egg or purposely impregnate the egg and thusly create a fertile egg without another animal being involved providing genetic material. And so, in this process, the animal essentially impregnates itself from itself. And this takes place in many different groups of animals. You'll, oft, you'll often see it in insects and microscopic animals. However, there are some 
more interesting cases where vertebrate animals will have it, and we will get to those shortly. But there's also a couple of things that aren't asexual reproduction that I did just want to touch on for a moment. For example, when armadillos can reproduce and have young without seeing a male for very long extended periods of time, there are some animals that will hold on to genetic material obtained from mating with another animal and can hold on to and store that DNA until it is the proper time for use. Animals like armadillos and kangaroos have been known to do this. To asexually reproduce? No, to have the sort of delayed sperm storage. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then they hold on to it for a little while. They put it in a little doggy bag and they take it home. And then a couple months later, they're looking through the fridge and they find it. And they thought, oh, fuck, I had that. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, but sometimes it goes bad, so you feed it to your dog instead. Or your Ew. or your wholesome yeah. grandma calls you up and says, Honey, you left something in the refrigerator. Do you want to come pick it up? Ew. <laughs> it's just a jar of sperm. I used it in the cake that I baked last week. I hope you liked it. Grandpa said he really loved it. <laughs> <laughs> this is our worst episode. Uh, <clears throat> so anyway, that is not parthenogenesis. That is just the sort of delayed impregnation. So animals like armadillos and kangaroos. I don't believe there's been any recorded cases of either of those species uh, or groups of animals committing asexual reproduction. It's so what you're a, saying is that's that's leftovers. That's like batter that's like still in the pan. Yeah, it's a, it's like the gremlin rule where you know they cross time zones with something in their teeth and it, it kind of falls out and then all of a sudden you know that they. No. Yeah, there's another fucking gremlin. Gremlins, gremlins. That's an interesting one. Would gremlins be considered a, a parthenogenic species? Um, I mean, the little fur balls pop out like crazy underwater. No, but um, fucking tribbles are. Now, Tribbles. because it is a family movie, it's never it's never shown whether or not the gremlins are sexually reproducing and then holding on to that genetic material. Huh. And if you're if you're taking the family content as what's shown as the entirety of the truth, then yes, I would say that gremlins could asexually reproduce. If you think about it, if you if you were able to breed them to get them to be small enough, you could actually put them in like a cereal box. And when you like pour milk on it, because milk has like a, a kind of a, a water base to it, uh, you could probably have like, it's, it'll be like Rice Krispies. They just pop in your mouth. Infinite, oh. infinite, infinite food source. Oh, I'm, I'm disgusted. That's our show, everybody. Even, even I'm disgusted oh. at this point. Oh, the little skeletons, they got a kind of little crunch. It kind of like, uh, it's like kicks. <laughs> Moving on. Get tested. Get tested. Get tested. <laughs> FDA pending. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I am all about testing things on children. Not really, don't put that on the record. Jesus. Okay, so back on topic. There are a Drink. couple noteworthy examples that are more well-known of parthenogenesis in vertebrate animals, animals with a backbone. You have the whip-tailed lizards and female mollies, uh, a small freshwater fish from South America, that are kind of the staples when you mention parthenogenesis in vertebrate animals. However, there are many more, which we will get around to tonight. And so, uh, Kiki, why don't you why don't you get in with one of the scariest examples of parthenogenesis? Yeah, pop in pop in some mollies, pop in some mollies. I think that's a, I think that's an excellent excellent topic to start on. Oh my god, yes. Uh, it's like we pop mollies doing this fucking fucking podcast. Popping mollies in the, the ice. Uh. <laughs> don't bring the song up. It's 2020. It's too late. What? Never too late. Always too late. We just haven't de we just haven't discovered necromancy yet. Mm -hmm. It's never too late. A parthenogenesis with my wife. 
She's a lizard. I, I fucking hate it. Guys. Okay, so, um... If, you said the scariest one, so I'm going with, uh... Komodo dragon. Yeah, yeah, that's what I meant. Alright, now, what's interesting about Komodo dragons is that, like, before... Like, for a while, they didn't even... They weren't even thought to have been, uh, aparthenogenic. Aparthenogenic. Um, but that all changed, uh... That all changed a while ago. Um, I think it was like 2006. Uh, there was a Komodo dragon in, uh, there was a Komodo dragon named Flora living in the Chester Zoo in England. Uh, never been with a male. She was pretty much like your Amazonian princess. Like, yeah, it all changed from the, yeah. Um, it was, pre she was pretty much your, uh, Amazonian princess. Never been with a male. Never, probably never even seen a male. And yet, she laid... A clutch of 11 eggs. Now, okay, that's no, no big deal. Chickens lay eggs without a male. Okay, no big deal. But the thing is, is that out of the 11 eggs, eight of them hatched. I think it was, eight, yeah, about eight of them hatched. Now, what's also interesting, <clears throat> what's also interesting is the fact that, uh, if I remember correctly, all of them were males. Oh, am I cutting yes. out? Sorry, guys, I'm cutting out. I know. Now, if I remember correctly, all the all the Komodo dragons that were born were males. Now, this is because where we have XY and XX chromosomes, reptiles have um Z, uh, W and Z. So, uh, never been with a man. Yeah. And she gives birth to 12 dudes. I don't know what's 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 more ironic about that punishment. No, no, no. Here's the cool thing, though, okay? Here's, here's something really cool. Now, with Komodo dragons, they could go onto an island where they've never been before, like, I don't know, a, a zoo enclosure, where there's no other animal. Now, they can... Uh, they can asexually reproduce, and they would give birth to males. Uh, the reason they give birth to males is because uh, where us females have the XX chromosomes and males have the XY chromosomes, uh, reptiles, if I remember correctly, <clears throat> have the uh, have the um, I think they have the 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 W the WZ chromosome. If I remember correctly, you can correct me. You can correct me on that. I'm sorry. Um, they have the uh, WZ chromosome, so they give birth to males. Now those males will grow up and they will mate with mom, and mom will give birth naturally, or not naturally. Mom will give birth like a normal lizard does through sperm and egg. Lay those eggs. Those egg like, those eggs grow up, and yeah, it is kind of like incestual, but it is a way of uh, preserving the species. Um, <clears throat> yes. It is, it is furthering the population while it's very, very inefficient when it comes to genetic diversity. It, it still gets things done. It, it really does. Like, nature, to a point, nature doesn't care who you populate with to a point. Like, in humans... Uh, incestual, rela incestual uh, relationships where you start having offspring with close families, those can have horrible consequences, like in, um, <clears throat> the, like, uh, royalties from the past. You can look up, um, like, Tutan uh, Tutankhamen, um, the Egyptian uh, pharaoh. He was hella inbred. Um, same with, uh, there's a British family, uh, there's a European royal, royal. Fam royal family that, like, inbred so bad that they're they're heir to the throne and of course I forgot his name um his heir, the heir to the throne was so badly inbred that he couldn't even talk like he it, he was mentally challenged like all hell yeah. um but with animals um <clears throat> I'm looking, I'm looking that up right now. But with animals, uh, in some cases of animals, inbreeding can actually help grow a, uh, a population. So, the Dugers, the Dugers, no. 
But some animals, cousin snuggling isn't bad. Gotcha. And yeah. it's not. It's. And it was the Habsburg family. It was a uh, Charles the. Nope. Sorry. Yeah. Charles the Second of Spain. My bad. Not Europe. Or not. It is Europe, but it's not England. It's uh, Spain. Charles the Second of Spain and the Habsburg family. Um, he was like hella inbred. Okay, so like, there's a lot of animals that do get like severely inbred that cannot survive, like snow leopards, uh, or not snow leopards. I'm sorry, armor leopards. Armor leopards are so endangered that sometimes yes, inbreeding does occur, but a lot of times those cubs don't survive, um, because they're inbred. Um, but there there are cases, like I said, with the Komodo dragon, where inbreeding can save a species. Now, going back to the Komodo dragon and the whole, like, you know, only, like, a, a female Komodo dragon can give birth to female, or sorry, to give birth to males, where, like, other animals that are, um, uh, uh, a, that can asexually reproduce, they give birth to, like, females. Now, that being said, as a Christian, as someone who was born, raised Christian, Let's put a let's put a let's put a pin in this because I want to talk really quick about the Virgin Mary. Let's put a pin in it. Uh, we could put something else in it too. Now, <laughs> well, see, the Virgin Mary, according to uh, the Bible, the Virgin Mary was a pure <coughs> thirteen-year-old. <coughs> was a <laughs> fucking Layla. Was a a pure <coughs> thirteen-year-old. Um. Who God said, hey, you're a virgin. I want to give you a baby. And she's just like, okay. Well, the thing is, is that... <laughs> the thing is, is that... Okay, sure. Um, We can talk girl about... Mary. What's that? <laughs> Fucking valley girl. Okay. <laughs> 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 this, <coughs> this pregnancy sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. So, anywho, um... I mean, if you think about it, most women complain about not having an orgasm during sex. She didn't even get the sex, and she got stuck with the kid. God, how does a, how do you lose that bat in a deal? Meanwhile, God told did you come? This major All sex. Right. Okay. Um. So. I'm also uh, gonna cut you off one. Second. I just I needed to, as you mentioned this earlier. There will be no swearing in my Christian podcast. <laughs> well, fuck, dude. I don't know what we're going to do then. Oh, All right. Shit. All right, guys. Um, so what's... Uh, is that? No? Okay. So what's fun is the fact that... Okay, so Mary, who is a mammal, asexually reproduces and gives birth to a male. But that's not possible in mammals. The moral of the story is the Virgin Mary was a reptile, and that is why our government is controlled by a bunch of reptiles. Okay. <clears throat> uh, it makes now. sense. I'm just and maybe saying. the reptiles were space aliens. Oh, no, they're just lizards. They were, the, they were the reptiles from Mars. Yeah, that's why yeah. Jesus was a star uh. child. And and when that Santa crazy Claus, guy with the hair on the History Channel, starting to make sense. Oh my God! And Please. when Santa Claus came down from the north to conquer the Martians, we made a movie about it. Bit of a dated reference there, my friend, but I respect it. <laughs> oh, while we're on the talk of parthenogenic reptiles and the ruling class of the United States. Let's um let's jump to the one of the exceptions for that rule, which is the whip tailed lizards. Would you care to uh, take us on about that one? I absolutely can if you give me a filler for about thirty seconds. Well, first, first, first the wiz the lizards whip, and then they nay nay. <laughs> okay, it's a very specific mating ritual pattern. That uh, not all of them, which is why the, 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 some of them are weeded out in, the, in the, uh, the dating pool of the Komodo, I'm sorry, Whiptail uh, Tinder. Uh, they have their own uh, special one. I, I can't pronounce it. I don't have like the, the gills. But um, there's a like specific that. ritual that, that goes into their procreating and their, their uh, courtship. 
So I hope that was 30 seconds. I'm a guy. I can't tell how long that is. I would have much rather have you made like some sort of kink joke, like with the whips instead of that. Like, like, like a, like a, like a lizard fat one or, or something like that. I, I would have much rather had you go that route. And I'm, I'm yeah, thinking, but that's I, so that's, it's everyone's into BDSM now. That's not, that's not all that risque anymore. I mean, your your typical suburban minivan driving housewife is into ball gags and pegging. <laughs> okay, so I'm totally. I mean, going they to practically have bumper Kiki stickers Kiki. on the soccer mobile. Kiki saved Daddy me. sits on this one with the five little kids and the soccer ball. Oh my god, I I missed a lot of that. <laughs> Thank you, Mister Gray. You, you you lucky motherfucker. All right, so I wanted to make sure that I'm on the right fucking whip tail. And yes, it is the it's the New Mexican whip tail or the oh my god, I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. I'll um, take a crack at give it. Give it to me. I'll take a crack at it. Aspidocellus neo mexicanus. That sounds pretty good. As- oh, yeah. Aspidocellus uh, neo mexicanus. All right, so Aspid Aspidocellus mexicanus. Neo Mexicanus. Uh, Neo Mexicanus. I think that's gonna be my new Tinder tag. That ain't bad. You did, you did good though. You didn't really butcher it. Neo Mexicanus with a lizard. I hate you. <laughs> <sighs> All right. <clears throat> so what's interesting about the the New Mexican Whiptail is yes, it's it's true. They are one of the um. They are one of the exceptions to the rules where I was talking about um, uh, how the Komodo dragon uh, can produce uh, males. The, uh, the New Mexican, the New Mexico whiptail. God damn it, go away! The New Mexico whiptail is um, is actually an all female. Um, is an all-female population. Now, the reason why they're called a whiptail is actually something to do with. Uh, the way they mate, because actually what they do is they mate, um, I like the one guy's joke I was watching on YouTube about, like, it's an all-female population, like a sorority house, it's where- just lesbian dominatrixes all over the place just beating each other, that, that sounds kind of hot. Well, hold on, hold on. The, it, it, when I, I imagine Fuck Island, I imagine that. Okay, so I was laughing because this was in that one guy's YouTube video I was dying over, but he goes, uh, he goes, now the New Mexican whiptail is an all-female population, like a sorority. Now what they do is that, uh, a group of them pretend to be males, and then they start, they start, uh, having sex with other females with a pseudo-penis, like a sorority. <laughs> <laughs> It's like the sorority without the hazing. And New Mexican whiptails, the sorority without the hazing, yeah. Alright, so, uh... I was, I was sitting on that. That is totally hazing. That is totally hazing. Oh my god. Is pegging a, a thing in, like, is, is that a hazing thing for sororities? Uh, I, I, don't I don't know. know. That's don't a dark know. alley. No, that's, that's, a, that's a dark alley in the area of the city that you you you're gonna get Syphilis just walking down the street. So oh, let's, let's, keep let's keep to the street lights. Let's keep to the street lights. Right. right. Find now, our way home. And if we are attacked, yell fire. Now the uh, now the thing about the uh, the whip tail is that uh, they are they're partial or they're genetically isolated. Uh, isolated. Um, species as diverse, like, what we were talking about, Komodo dragons and even hammer, am, hammerhead sar- uh, sharks can do it asexually if necessary, but these lizards, they, they have to do it asexually. Like, they, they have no other choice. Um, they can't exchange genetic material, and that's kind of a loss of, ex- or that loss of exchange is a major disadvantage to them in a changing environment. So, unless they can co- Seriously, I muted this chat. Hold up. Okay, sorry about that. All right, now um, unless the unless they can like recombine their DNA that they already have, they um they'll just produce an offspring with an identical set of chromosomes, and so they're like bananas. They're like bananas. They clone. 
I don't know much about plants, so you got me on that one, so I don't really... Uh, the modern banana that we have is actually a clone of the same banana that's been, I think it's like the last 50 or 60 years. Um, the problem with that is that because of the lack of genetic diversity, it uh, causes them to uh, be prone to diseases. And uh, there's actually a lot of diseases and fungal activity that's kind of crept up on uh, most of the areas that produce the bananas that are killing them off in droves. Uh, there was a prediction that we were going to lose the common banana. Um, in the next like five to ten years or something like that. I don't know if they. I don't know if you know they cooked up some super awesome <laughs> scientific cure for that, but that was the last I heard about it. All right, thank you for joining us on Bananimal Bites. <laughs> I mean, having a background in food helps. Animals are animals are just food before food. So I mean, I'm I'm, I'm down with it. No, I was just I was I was making a joke. Okay. So, um, but basically, yeah, with, uh, uh, but if you have anything else to talk about the whip tails, I would love that. Um, help me out here. <clears throat> I don't really know. I am not really the reptile person. You're actually more of the reptile person than I am. You actually covered it pretty damn well, but I am going to take a little bit of that and I'm going to jump to a, I'm going to segue to something different because you did mention it's an all female population. There is another noteworthy species that I believe I mentioned in the intro. I don't know. It's been so long ago. That uh, that is also an entirely female population, and that's the Amazon molly. And it is a small little freshwater fish you can find down in Mexico and South America. And they're cute little dudes, except they're not dudes; they're all girls. And they did you just misgender? Did you just misgender fish? I just misgendered an entire species. Eat that. <laughs> Oh my, <laughs> oh my god! This is this is gonna make the alphabet people very angry. See the the, the South American Molly. When you say that, it's, I'm just thinking an EDM festival with people just laced <laughs> out of their minds and light shows going on, and and you just got the group that all of them happen to be named Molly, and they're all just doing like psychedelics and dancing and shit and trip hop in the background. I didn't mention Brazil, but we may as well go there. Because that's where you can find them. The Banana Republic, that yes. Means... Oh, God. Bananable bites. That's not, that's not getting in my fashion. I was talking about uh, the actual Banana Republic. Not the overpriced jeans. I don't want to spend $80 on a pair of fucking jeans. Alright. Uh, so, um... Before we go to Brazil, really quickly, I do want to say I do want to say the one thing about the uh, the whip tailed uh, the whip tailed lizard. Now, um, because they reproduce asexually, uh, the problem is that they really it really shouldn't work like that. Like the egg and the sperm cells are supposed to be created uh, through a process called meiosis. Um. So uh, how like so how did like. So basically, uh, how that works is um, female whiptails have a subtly different style of meiosis where they double their chromosomes twice before everything starts. It creates eight copies of each chromosome. Now, during the normal two rounds of cell division, these copies are partitioned two apiece among the four daughter cells. Um, the <laughs> amount of... What? Because... Count uh, it, it's, it's, it's measured, of the, uh, to measure the amount of DNA in the egg cells, or the oocytes, um, of two closely related whip tails just before they went through two round, or before the first round of the meiosis, um, at this stage, the chromosomes of this asexual checkered whip tail take up twice as much room as those of the Texan spotted whip tail, even though both species have generally sized genomes. Now, under a microscope, uh, Lutz even, or sorry, under a microscope, they even managed to count twice the number of normal chromosomes in the oocytes of the checkered whiptails. Huh. It's fucking nuts. I know, right? Dude, animals are cool. I don't know why everybody's... I don't know why everybody says, you know, I don't know why you like animals. That's such a childish thing. And I'm just like... Mexican but, uh, whiptails. But and I'm just here like, you projecting, girl. But the whip tails went. I've been single for a while. I'm about to asexually reproduce. 
Well, and while we're talking about that, that is surprising <laughs> from a personal understanding of, of your species. <laughs> that is very surprising. Wow. I don't think the world could handle a clone of uh, River. No. River can't even know. handle a clone of River. River's got but a cat and she can barely handle. I love you, but if there were two of you, I'd kill one of them. <laughs> kill the younger one. She's the clone. High, Highlander, Highlander rules. There could only be that. one! There could only be one! <laughs> two, there are too many. Uh, I lost Plus, track. What were you going to talk about? What was the next topic? It would be a great way for me to take out any frustration I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> this is for the puns! This is for uh, this is for not practicing before your other show! This is for puns! This is for making me hate alliteration! You bastard! <laughs> this is for making me work with your director on your other show! Ooh. So we did. We did whip tail tur uh, whip tail the uh, 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 lizards. What are we doing? Like cane toads next? Uh, oh. Maybe ball gag wombats? No, you're uh, right. What, what How about what else do we got? No, no, How I about cane turkeys? Toads. Cane toads. Fuck. We're fucking nerds. Because I know your brain went to cane toads too. Toads are not. To God damn it, da. Turkeys. Oh, I was going to jump back to um, the the Amazon Molly for a moment. Okay, do it. So, um, another thing about the Amazon Molly is that there is very, very occasionally a male that shows up in the population uh, through basically kind of a genetic ac an accident at the genetic level. Uh, but he's fucking useless as he is... So, wait a second. Fucking useless is like... A, a very high degree of uselessness, or he's useless at fucking? Both. Oh, okay. Fantastic. The, um, the population has become so reliant on asexual reproduction from the females that the males, essentially, the, the parts don't mix anymore. Even though they're fish and the the sexual part of the reproduction is not... It's, it's That's not the actual part. It's the method of reproduction. Essentially, he's infertile. He's got nothing to make. My it. god, that sounds like... That, that sounds that like sounds paradise. Like oh. That sounds like paradise. It like, one night stands till the end of days and no consequences and females everywhere? No, no, no societal romantic predators? You just have... Card blanc on the entire sorority. God, this is like it's like an American Pie straight to straight to DVD video. Well, yeah, this don't fuck for fun, so it, it's not. He ain't getting really anything out of it. He's just getting a life without reproduction and then death. That As sounds like fun. DA's. That sounds like DA's dream life. Can can you give me can can just a little sliver just just we'll, just we'll give you your masturbation phase. just a little sliver like like just 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 the the prospect of the possibility that such a thing can exist just give me that dream just give me that dream day day two hundred and fifty seven without sex cane toad man <laughs> cane toad day two hundred and fifty seven without sex I jerked off thinking about fish today. <laughs> Oh shit, you guys were talking- okay, sorry. I'm not- I'm not that far. You're not that I'm far. not that far. Not yet? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> anyway, moving, moving on to, um, to turkeys, as you mentioned earlier. And so, the funniest part is, is with turkeys, it's something we've known about for quite some time. This, the turkey has been domesticated for quite some time. And so occasionally you will have- you know, your your standard turkey farmer, we'll call him uh, Turkey Farmer, and... <laughs> call him Stan. He, he's got his... Oh, yeah, I'm very creative. Um, when it comes to his flocks of turkeys, and every once in a while, he'll, uh, he won't have any gobblers in there, and then one of his hens will uh, pop out a bunch of eggs, and they hatch. And so you get the farmer looking and thinking, eh, 
It's weird. And he does nothing about it. Except he prays to God even harder because this is obviously a sign of the plague or the dark times or something that came from God. You know. It's the end times. The end times have come. And so this has been happening for a while now. And so for the most part, most people just thought of it as kind of, huh, oh, that's weird. And they moved on with their lives. <laughs> And so it wasn't until, you know, the past hundred years where people stopped and said, hey, turkey farmer, did your turkey just lay a bunch of eggs and have chicks without without mating with a male? And turkey farmer just kind of looks at him and goes, yeah, pretty fucking weird, right? <laughs> okay. I think, we're I, I, think, I think, and I don't know if this is just me, I think we're m missing a lot of potential with this unnamed turkey farmer. I'd like to go out and say his name is Haas. Haas and he's really an old soul. He enjoys <laughs> fine wine and classical music. And he even has begun knitting. But he doesn't bring it up to the family because they'll think he's weird. Ah, yes. But he's a gentle beast. And then he cuts the heads off of turkeys and, you know, just does his job. But, but... When he found out that his female turkey, um, uh, parthogen parthogenesisist, he you mean just just go with reproduced asexually. Reproduced. Jesus Christ. I am <laughs> on my third mics. Holy shit! Now, when she asexually reproduced, Farmer Haas tied her ass up to a stake and burned her as a heretic. Oh my god. Oh, did that turkey just lay eggs and produce chicks without mating? Yes. Witch! Burn her! Burn her in the oven at 3.50 for two hours! <laughs> I, think, I think we're missing something here. Virgin birth? Turkeys? The second coming? Christ came back as a turkey. And we just had him as 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 a as a uh, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving treat. And he's died so many fucking times. To be fair, if Jesus came back looking like how he did back when, way back when, America would have fucking prosecuted him. <laughs> the body of Christ 2.0 is delicious. <laughs> I like this new body of Christ. <laughs> Who is that, Layla? Oh. You are a peach. Okay, okay, Steph, take a drink. Um, really quick, somebody literally calculated how many ch how many Jesus you'd have to eat in order to eat the entire body of Jesus. Did you did you just call him Jesus? The Jesus, yes. I love that. Hey, ketchup on the body of Christ 2.0 is delicious. Damn it. Do you put ketchup on turkey? No, I put ketchup on the body of Christ 2.0. Fucking heathen. <laughs> okay, so pushing thirty six minutes. Oh, hold up, what? Pushing thirty six no, minutes. Not, not you. The guy outside waving at me. What? We have to pause the episode. <laughs> but if you talk one more time, I'm gonna knock you out. Okay, guys, hold on. Yes, stranger out my window. How can I help you? I saw you. You're Hey, is that um your mother over there? No, that's not my moped. She's single! What's your name? And ready to mingle! What's your name? Ryan. Ryan? Yep. Oh, it was nice to meet you. I live here if you ever want to, like, I don't talk or I don't know if you want to. Does I'm Ryan not. like anacondas? Shut up, DA! <laughs> yeah, you too. Alright. Bye, hon. I don't think I don't think we can top that. Oh, is he cute? Was he cute? Come on. Yes, he was. That's, that's, that's yes. B roll. That's yes. B roll. Yes, he for, was. Bud, shut just, up. Oh my god, that is that is. Mmm, that's some juicy B roll. I like that. We need to add that in the the after dark, after dark X X X. After dark, after dark. D A. What's the time? Uh, thirty seven forty five. Eleven thirty. <laughs> Uh, maybe get some beer and I'll buy food. Oh, yeah. Got it. All right. 
All right. Well, Sounds good. Yeah. Did I well, that? inquiring minds want to know. I mean, is he fuckable? I'm so <laughs> sorry! <laughs> I mean, would I find him attractive? He's no. Still, oh, you're still, still talking to him. Oh my god, this is going to be so embarrassing for you. <laughs> he just asked me out of... He just asked me out on a date. <laughs> <laughs> and we got on to <laughs> <laughs> best, best podcast ever. Hi, Ryan, Brian. <laughs> oh. He's coming oh, back at 11.30. We're going to go out for beers. Us and I'm <laughs> <laughs> All right. Back to, back to the oh, sorority sister wait, fucking wait, wait, Molly's wait, wait. And, and the rest of it. We got, we got, we got ground to cover. You can, you can explore the, uh, the bush and the anaconda later. Oh my god! Oh my god. Okay. Alright. I think we need a second to collect ourselves here. No, full steam. Raw dog. We don't stop. Just, just, just right in there. Right. We, don't stop. we don't stop until she can't move. Crying isn't an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, only, this ride only stops in an emergency. Crying isn't an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> you want to get off Mr. Bones' wild ride? I want to get off Mr. Get off Bones' off. wild ride! <laughs> Alright, 39.52. Let's go, kids. Alright, alright. Molly's in their strap-on. Back to game faith. Molly's in their strap-ons. Keep them the same. Welcome back, Animal Bites, folks. We just took a minor a little intervention there as a, a, a handsome young gentleman at the window. A Ooh. human, not a lizard. A we want to specifically... We want to... We <laughs> we wanna... If you're listening to this in the future, hello. And I'm sorry. Anyway, we're going to move on to another uh, another animal that, that uh, goes through parthenogenesis that a lot of people are afraid of. Let's talk about sharks for a moment. Now, we're not going to be talking about any of the big bads that terrify the people. This ain't going to be no Jaws, Megalodon, no Tiger Shark, Bull Shark, Bullshit. We're going to be talking about some of the smaller species of shark that are just as interesting, however, not as uh, horror blockbuster movie worthy. You know what? Size isn't everything. Sometimes you need someone just to hold you and tell you everything's going to be okay. However, for these sharks, no one's going to hold them. Everything's just going to be okay. They're just going to make their babies on their own. So uh, these three species uh, that I'm just going to point out, I, I believe there are more. However, I'm just going to talk about these three and just mention them. We've got the white-spotted bamboo shark, the bonnethead shark, uh, I think that's the one I'm going to focus on for this, and the chain cat shark. Now, shark emit parthenogenesis in the way similar mentioned earlier, how the organism will have cells that are dividing, and then suddenly one of them will turn into an egg cell, and the polar cells that usually just are, will be used to impregnate that egg cell. And so, with that, and then I believe... If I am not mistaken, I think one of these species of sharks may commit live birth. Um, I'm not 100% sure about that. As I'm talking, I think one of them will uh, look into that a little bit more. Uh, and another species, this was uh, made headlines back in 2017, was a zebra shark that had a quote-unquote virgin birth or parthenogenesis. In where's the name? Of it? Ah, the Reef HQ Aquarium in Townsville, Queensland. So this was in a captive situation, and I'm going to jump back for one moment. And a lot of the species and instances we are talking about were recorded from individuals in man in managed care or captivity. Meanwhile. There are instances of a lot of taking place in the wild, like the whiptail lizards and the Amazon mollies. Those both take place in the wild, but with the turkeys and a lot of these sharks, they are methods that have been reported in captivity. And so, 
as we did talk about earlier, some of this is used as sort of a survival tactic. For example, when a female can't find a mate, then she will go ahead and make babies herself in order to further the population, because for them, it kind of seems like there's nobody left. So, gotta make more, you know? Yeah, so, that's true, yeah. Is, now, yeah. Uh, um, did you talk about the, the white spotted bamboo sharks? Spotted bamboo sharks? Yeah. They were not one of the species I mentioned. I just mentioned zebras, bamboo... Oh, wait, I, I did mention white spotted bamboo shark. Yeah, that's what I said, the white spotted bamboo shark. The one where, uh, back in Detroit in 2002, they, uh, they, uh, asexually reproduced. Yeah. Yeah. And then Bob and Shane Cat. So they did the, uh, they did the, the in the tank brown chicka brown cow. Nice. Well, actually, um, what happened is, uh, they... The, the eggs that the two females laid uh, hatched 15 weeks after being laid, and it baffled experts because uh, the mother shared an aquarium with only one other female. Now, the female bamboo sharks had laid eggs in the past, and it wasn't really ex unexpected, but there was no male, so that's what really confused the experts. Now, normally the eggs are assumed to be, like, inviolable and usually discarded, but this batch of eggs that was laid in, two in uh, 2002... Um, what, what left undiscovered, like they, the, nobody even like saw these eggs and, um, they, they were considered for the, the birth of the Detroit, uh, bamboo sharks, including thoughts that the sharks had been fertilized by a male and just stored the sperm, like how we were talking about earlier. Well, as the possibility that the Belle Isle bamboo sharks are hermaphrodites, which means they're harboring both male and female sex organs and capable of fertilizing their own eggs, but that's not confirmed. Like... They still haven't, like, they're not, they're, it wasn't confirmed that they're, uh, what do you call it, uh, hermaph hermaphrodites. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't confirmed that they were hermaphrodites. What was confirmed is the fact that uh, these two females, they laid eggs, they weren't found, and yet uh, they hatched, and there was no male. So, that isn't, like, it's so weird how, like, animals can, um, <clears throat> how animals can do that. Like, how animals can... Just, like, fucking... Oh, yeah, hold on. I gotcha. Um, it's so weird how animals can, like, fucking, like, switch over like that. Like, just go from... Hi, I reproduce between, you know, I re reproduce normally to... Haha, <laughs> fooled ya! I'm asexually... I asexually reproduced. So, it's just so fucking cool. Like, that is, like, the one thing I love about, like, especially, like, non-mammals, because that's, my forte is just mammals. Like, that's pretty much what I do, what I talk about is, what I do, what I talk about is just mammals, but it's so cool learning outside of mammals, because believe it or not, mammals can actually be very predictive, you know, especially when it comes to, like, biology and science. They can be very predictive. Okay, you have, uh, you have, um, mammals that are, um, uh, they reproduce via ovaries. They reproduce via um, marsupials. They re reproduce via um, eggs. Okay, cool. But in other animals, like fish, insects, fucking birds, it's just like, hey, guess what? This egg? Ha-ha! <laughs> Bitches! You know? Like, I just reproduced without any, without any help. I just made babies from no. fucking... Man. Now, what's the one thing that these what's the one thing that these guys have in common? Is the the one thing that these guys have in common is that okay, yeah, they all lay eggs. Now, there now there's no instance where monotremes, egg-laying mammals have asexually reproduced. That yeah, I I'm going to hop in here for one moment. No, no, no. And if there is, please let me know because I out of all the times I have studied mammals because I'm a mammalian, I'm a mammalian animal person. I haven't found any t any type of. I mean, there's mice that asexually reproduce, but that was with the help of like science and labs and you know fucking very expensive uh, grants. Like, hey, I want to. Hey, I want to clone mice. <laughs> fucking Dolly the sheep, the clone. All right, that wasn't. Uh, that was with help of science. That has never happened naturally in the mammalian world. But there is <laughs> no evidence of monotremes being able to asexually reproduce the way that, uh, 
uh, like fucking other egg laying, egg laying animals have between uh, the reptiles that we talked about, the uh, the turkeys and the chickens that we talk about. I will say, or this. that owl that's hooting outside my fucking window. I will say that the now there's no, as far as I know, I might be wrong, but I'm pretty sure there's been no recorded instances of a monotreme may sexually reproduce reproduce it. However. I'm not going to say it's impossible, as monotremes are the closest to a reptile you can get in a mammal form. Pretty damn close. And so, we have at least, at bare minimum, two separate instances of reptiles committing part. Now, both of these have been lizards, and are the ones that we've talked about, and... Lizards are quite, quite far off from mammals. You gotta go down to the evolutionary ladder quite a bit before you get back to our last common ancestor with, uh, with lizards. But, I don't want to go out there and say it's impossible. Because I feel like if I do, one day we're gonna get proved wrong. I mean, they didn't think that, uh, they didn't think that those sharks were, uh, capable of doing it until fucking 2001. I mean, exactly. it, hell, they didn't think Komodo dragons were capable all they, of doing all it. They just needed, all they just needed was a couple of relationships with a couple of Kyles and some can-do attitude, and they you, popped one out. You, oh, way, you do know your nephew named Kyle is listening in on this, right? <laughs> I just, I just realized that. <laughs> <laughs> Kyle. You probably could have used the word Chad. Chad would have been good. Speaking of that, as um, as as you were talking about the the two sharks, I kind of just pictured like a lesbian couple of sharks that are living together in their aquarium, and like they've got like a catfish in there and some nice house plants, and uh, it is very quaint and very nice. Two broke sharks. <laughs> two broke sharks, like, but the. In I, okay. relationship is actually there. But what? But the implied lesbian relationship is actually there. Touche. Oh my god. The lesbian shark. Oh my god. One's got a one's one's got a haircut like mine. The other one's got a haircut like DA's. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> looks like cat I mean, if if uh, to 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 spoil our viewers, it's long and lustrous, full body and bounce. It's kind of like that Garnier Fructis where the girl's all orgasming while she's uh, washing her hair. That's that's just it's that. Bitch, you you put. Bitch, you are bald.
<laughs> All right. So, um, we are like slowly dying off of this. We're, we're, yeah, we're <laughs> yeah, sorry guys, but, uh, no, no, uh, the cloning and Dali is actually an interesting subject. We probably should have, you know, researched it before, but, um, probably. I just kind of threw did, that up on the fly. Did we, did we talk about mice or were you in the middle of talking about mice when you were talking about Dali and then we just kind of like fucking segwayed. So we ADD'd in the other we, direction, yes. No wonder Steph isn't responding. She's probably drunk off her ass. Oh, absolutely. Um, so I, I know I'm my, getting there. I'm on we'll my third mic. We'll be coming out with the official PDF. Of Your the third mic? Yeah, Tonight? Yeah. God, you had a Brian, now you're having three mics? Oh my god, god DA, shut the fuck up. This is a great day. It is a great day. I fucking hate you all. Okay. Well, oh, you said Illinois. Illinois? I always say Illinois. from the fucking south? I've always said <laughs> Illinois. Even when I was living in Illinois, I said Illinois. Never noticed. Help us all. <laughs> dude, all this homeboy, dude. You were a mutant since before you left, and we never knew. Homeboy, homeboy from uh, the games, uh, Gamesville? Um, the, the, the gaming store, he's all like, you got an accent, you're not from around here, and I'm like, who the fuck, I'm like, how the, what accent, he's like, say, he's like, what's the biggest major city you used to live next to, I was like, Chicago, and he's like, hey, Chicago, and I'm like, shut up, he's like, hey, 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 what's that state that's kitty corner to you, the one that has Minneapolis, St. Paul, and I was just like, Minnesota? And he's just like, ha what, what team do the, well, what, what's the famous football team in uh, Illinois? And I'm like, the Bears. <laughs> <laughs> you should have, you should have come back with, hey, what state has the biggest per capita meth addiction? <laughs> <laughs> what state has the biggest second wave of, cur of the Backstreet Boys uh, world tour reunion? You, you I was going to say Corona, but they're both Florida. <laughs> All right, so hope everybody's staying uh, safe from the Backstreet Boys, and um, no, 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 next no, no, month, no, no, next no, month we're gonna talk shit. about what'd you say? All the shit for like the past ten minutes is getting cut out. <laughs> Leave it in. All right, so, <clears throat> so and with that, it seems like we're gonna wrap up. Oh, God. <laughs> Layla, you are unclean. Wait. It seems like with that, we're going to start to wrap up. Thank you for joining us for this absolute fucking self-fucking dumpster fire. And uh, with that, we're going to give you what we're going to be talking about next month, which is the topic I am most excited about. We're going to be talking about evolutionary anachronisms. Don't Google it. Google it. Whatever you want to do. We'll be telling you more next month in June, July, whatever July. month. This, we're in the Backstreet Boys reunion tour, so God knows what month it is. We're all just sitting there at those large gatherings and concerts, uh, listening to the Backstreet Boys reunion tour, you know. Um, and oh, next month we will actually be not practicing social distancing, as you should always do at any concert ever, as you don't want to bump into someone as a mosh pit. And uh, we're going to be all hanging out together for the first time in, in, quite, a, in quite a little bit while as uh, one of the members of our team will make their way back to their ancestral homeland. And uh, we will be doing this episode live. So me. thank you for joining me. Well, it's what? I said me. Now, Maybe. bud, tell me, fuck why. Fuck. <laughs> tell me why. Tell me why. Ain't nothing but a <laughs> But, so being down in Florida, being down in Florida has really shown me, has really shown me, oh my god, I can't even say it, <laughs> the reason, it the reason for being lonely. Oh, <laughs> Tell me why can't I feel it? Fuck off. <laughs> Literally, uh, fucking, uh, Aaron and Dan have had, like, the best way to name the stupid virus, so, like, yes, I'm keeping it, I'm stealing it from them. 
All right, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, I was. I'm sorry. I know this episode was a little bit of a dumpster fire, but not as a dumpster fire as our last episode, or the two epi the episodes two before us. So, um, thanks for joining yeah. us. And uh, Bud, sign us out. This far, like we're sorry. We're sorry. No, we're not. No, we're not. None of us are sorry. You knew what you signed up for. Sorry. <laughs> if you clicked and you sat through it. You should really re. Re-examine the choices you've made in your life up until this point. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. We ap we we appreciate you listening, and uh, we'll talk to you next month with some uh, with some fun facts about some animals. Nice one, <laughs> nice one, bud. <laughs>